What's good everybody, it's your boy Hamza from Author Gaming coming back to you guys with a brand new video. This time I'm going to be doing a card breakdown on the specific card, Crooked Cook. You guys will know what I'm talking about as soon as you get into the video. Like the video guys, comment what you guys want to see next, and of course, let's get right into it. Alright guys, so now we are going to be talking about number 59, Crooked Cook. So basically, um, this card just says you can make it with two level 4 monsters. While I control no other cards on the field, this card is unaffected by other card effects. Once returned, detach Roman Shield from this card, destroy as many other cards you control as possible. This card gains 300 attack until the end of this turn for each monster destroyed by this effect and sent to the graveyard. So the second effect we don't really care about, I mean it might come up, it might not, um, we don't really know about that. But the first effect is what we care about. While no other cards are on the field, this card is unaffected um, by other card effects. And it's basically while you control no other cards, obviously while no other cards like your opponent summons a card, this card would suck, right? It says while you control no other cards. So this counts if like your opponent has Crooked Cook and they activate a card, um, Crooked Cook will turn off for that one instant. So if you can chain like an effect dealer and infinite permanence to negate Crooked Cook, that's another way um, to have dealing with that card. But in general, what people do is they'll make Crooked Cook, they'll summon him in defense position by summoning out uh, Right Hand Shark. So basically Right Hand Shark says, um, blah, blah, we don't really care about this effect, but we care about this effect. An XYZ monster that was summoned using only water monsters as a material, including this card, including this card on the field, gains this effect. This card cannot be just for a battle, right? So now we go back to Cook, Cook right here. Oh my gosh, this is a difficult name to say. Um, he says, while you control no other cards in the field, this card is unaffected by card effects. Then when you slap on right hand shark for him, um, he can't be destroyed by battle as well. So now he's unaffected by card effects and he cannot be destroyed by battle. So I'm sure you're wondering like now, like, yo, I gotta make this card with only water monsters. Like what, what deck can do that? How can I do that? So if you guys go ahead, we can see right here, we're reading Buzzsaw Shark. He says, you can target one water monster you control. Best one from your deck in defense position, one fish monster with the same level as that monster. Different name if you do it cannot activate its effects, blah blah. blah. You can only special summon X XYZ monsters and a bunch of things. Um, this card can be a three or five. We don't care about that. The only thing we care about is being able to target one water monster you control, including himself, and then summoning a fish from your deck in defense position. If you go up here and you check out um, right hand shark, he's indeed a fish. He's a different name than Buzzsaw Shark, and all you um yeah, and all you do is you go normal Buzzsaw Shark, effect target, summon a right hand shark. And now right hand shark, uh, um, when he's used at XYC using only water monsters, can't be destroyed by battle, you make Crooked Cook. Now he's unaffected by card effects, he can't be uh, destroyed by battle. He's really similar to like Rongo in the sense where like he was unaffected, he can't do anything. So you literally can't play and a lot of decks actually don't have outs today. So basically now you're wondering, okay, what's the win con of this deck? Because you can't just do it, right? But technically speaking, a lot of people do stall, they try to deck you out. But there are two other methods. One, the funny method, you guys can see it, it's Exodia. Um, you literally just play one of each piece. You summon out Crooked Cook, he can't be destroyed by battle. He's unaffected by all card effects. He's literally the best card in the world. Summon a defense so you don't take any damage. And then um, you just draw your exotic piece and you win. Another win con is actually final countdown. So um, you just sit on Crook Cook, you wait, you wait, you wait, you wait, you wait. After you final countdown, and you literally just win the game because a lot of decks currently do not have an out to Crook Cook, which is actually pretty funny. Um, and now I'm just going to talk about like certain ways to get around Crook Cook. So one of the ways you can actually get around him is um, with Kaijus. Um, right here, I have Godarla highlighted, um, and the reason why is because Wind Barrier Statue is currently in the meta, so I feel like um, being able to side a Kaiju specifically for Crooked Cook, but then also having it for Barrier Statue is actually pretty good um, to deal with Flunder, maybe a random bird guy, maybe a random Sun player. But another um, pretty good um, option is Gamseal, the Water Kaiju, and that's specifically because um, the Water deck that can actually summon the Sharks, they play Gozen Match with Stealth Kragen. And um, essentially, they're going to try and lock you into summoning only water monsters. So Gamseal is another good out. But yeah, Kaijus is another good out. And another out, I mean, like technically speaking, I feel like you should just be playing Kaijus if you're afraid of this card. But another card you can technically play if you have space um, is XYZ Encore. Now, this card works differently. And I'm sure if you guys remember this card um, during Rongo format or Rongo format, um, you guys will know exactly how this card does. So this card says target one face of XYZ monster your opponent controls that has XYZ material. Detach all XYZ materials from it. And if you do, return to the extra deck. Then if there's a monster card in the graveyard among those detached XYZ materials, best summon as many of those monsters from possible, blah, blah, their levels are loose by one, cards cannot be activated in response. So really similar to Super Poly. But this is the reason, right? So Cook Cook says, while no other cards are on the field, this card is unaffected by card effects. And then again, right hand shark can't be sure of battle. But XYZ Encore isn't affecting the card. He's affecting the XYZ materials that are attached to the card. It's a really weird ruling. Um, It came up during Rongo format. So that's the only reason why I remember XYZ Encore. Um, you just draw this card for turn. You go standby phase. You just activate on Cook Cook, but I feel like XYZ Encore, um, this card will come up like a little more if Crooked Cook becomes meta, um, whereas the Kaijus are always there. So I, I just wanted to make a quick video um, highlighting the weaknesses of Crooked Cook and just to be on the lookout for Crooked Cook because you guys can get hit with this 
um, card at your local, maybe at a YCS or something. So please, guys, um, make sure you pay attention um, with Godarla, Gamma Seal, um, maybe XYZ Encore. Another good way is just to stop Buzzsaw Shark in general, because I feel like him and um, Lantern Shark are the only ones that can summon this guy from your hand. Um, so yeah, and again, even if you negate the effects, it doesn't matter because this like if they're XYZ summoning it. So it's a whole thing. Anyways, guys, um, I hope you like this type of video. Let me know what you guys think down below. So guys, that was it for the video. If you guys liked the video, go ahead and like the video. Comment what you guys want to see next. If you made it to the end, comment down Cook. That's C-O-O-K. -okay. And without further ado, guys, I'm Hamza. Like I always say, keep on shining. Never go on your dreams. Peace.